welcome to another 3D Fluff training video. Uh, today I'd like to show you an interesting technique on making IES lights editable. Now if you've never come across them before, we're talking about this kind of light over here, the IES light. Uh, these are lights which allow you to essentially cast interesting looking light patterns straight from the light into your scene. Very popular amongst architects for technical reasons, getting the, the shape and the brightness correct. Uh, but to be honest, also mostly useful for just getting nice pretty looking lights. So. Just to show you exactly what we're talking about here, if I grab a flat plane and make it white, this can be our floor, and with another copy of this, this can be a wall panel. So I'm going to use an IES light, uh, and just to give you a bit of advice, don't select IES from here, because I'm going to find my IES data in Cinema's content browser. Um, if you come over to this content browser tab, and you just search for IES, this is assuming you've got all the uh, content libraries installed, you'll find there's this whole series of hundreds of these IES lights. So if we scroll through and find one that we like the look of, just something with some interesting uh, rays of light will do, something like, uh, let's say, this here perhaps. I want to use this, but um, there's nothing much I can really do with it. I can't drag it into my scene, that doesn't work. And if I do select IES light from the top menu here, up there, it's going to ask me to go find a file on my hard drive, but it's not on my hard drive as such. I want to grab it from here. So don't do those. Just grab a regular light, and under the first pull down menu which says type, change it from Omni to IES. You can now manually choose this file yourself. So if we jump on over to the tab which says photometric, it will ask us for a photometric file, and although the naming here doesn't really uh, help or imply what it is, this is where you put your IES data. So, as I say, I'm going to grab one of these ready-made ones just from Cinema's content library. Feel free to use your own if you've got some. So we can just drag and drop this into there. And now what you should find is that your previously dull, boring light will now cast these uh, nice interesting patterns. Now you may have to play around a little bit with rotation to rotate it around or possibly with the light's photometric intensity to choose how bright or dim it's going to be. But uh, yeah, there we go. We now have this lovely light which casts all these uh, interesting patterns. But uh, here's, the, here's the thing uh, and here's the point of this video. What if I want to change it? What if I like this pattern it casts, but it's just not quite right? Maybe I want to get rid of these uh, bit of backlighting up over here, or maybe I want a couple of extra streaks coming down there. The thing is, you can't edit it. You're, you're pretty much just stuck with what you've got. So what I'm going to show you is a way that you can edit it. Um, essentially, we're going to bake this thing out. So once you've got an IES light, let's just name it uh, so we can keep track of this, IES light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object, copy it, Control c and dump it into a new Cinema 4D project. But what we want to make sure we do is get this light exactly in the centre of the scene. So if you've got a copy of Studio, you can use Cinema's uh, character animation reset PSR command, reset position scale rotation, that will pop it back into the middle, or if not, just come down to your coordinates here, and all these numbers you see, you can just type in zero in amongst all of these. So tab, 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 set them all down to zero, and hit enter. And that will pop your light straight into the middle. Now in order to bake this out, we essentially need to illuminate a surface, render the surface, and then that will effectively serve as our texture for a new light source. So let's see what we mean with this. So here's my light. I'm going to take a sphere, and I'm going to make that sphere quite large. It's, it's, we don't really, strictly speaking, have to do this, but it's nice to just be inside the sphere so we can kind of see what's going on. So there's our sphere. We'll make it uh, white. Now, it, it doesn't, strictly speaking, have to be exactly white. The default material here is just a very light shade of grey, but that's fine. That's close enough. That doesn't really make too much difference. So we'll just leave a default material on it. But now we need to brighten up our light so that we can actually see this thing shining over on the surface. So with your IES light, go to the photometric intensity and turn this thing up until you can see it illuminating your scene. Now you might have to sort of back up or uh, 
zoom out a bit to see what's going on. But this light is now essentially illuminating the inside of the sphere object. And what you need to do is turn this intensity slider up, more, more intensity, uh, turn it up until you start to see it bleach out. So here you can see it's sort of uh, clipped and gone white. And then just pull it back a bit so that it isn't clipping. It doesn't have to be, again, doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be spot on white. You just want to try and get it as bright as you can without clipping the brightness. Um, and that's it. So we've now essentially got this sphere which is lit up inside, so the outside will be dark, but inside we can see this sphere having the pattern cast. And what we can now do is we can bake this out. So the simplest way of doing this, um, there are a couple of items in the content browser for baking scenes, but I tend to find it's not really any quicker than just doing it yourself. So I'm going to do it myself. Plus you might find they're only included with certain versions of cinema, so I don't want to run the risk that you don't actually have these tools. Um, but if I add a standard camera, and I place that camera in the middle of the universe with the light source, so again, you can either zero out these numbers down here, or you can come up to your character menu under commands and say reset PSR, put the camera into the middle of the universe. And there it is, there we go, there's our camera. Now what we're going to do is we're going to render out a spherical camera. So this will need uh, one of the more recent versions of Cinema to use. Uh, it works in version 19 and up. It might work in 18, I can't quite remember when they added the spherical abilities. Uh, but anyway, we're going to turn our camera on, so we're looking through. And down here in our camera settings, we're going to go to our spherical page. So nip over to where it says spherical. And pretty much we just need to turn it on and set it to be a sphere. So enable it. And we're going to tell our rendering it should fit the frame of everything that renders. So in other words, squash and stretch the image we're about to make until it just fits everything. And we want to use the full range. So this is asking us, okay, how much of a sphere should it be? Well, just to make sure that we, we don't have to mess around with all these sliders, we can just say, use the full range. Make a complete spherical rendering. And that's it. We're ready to go. If we now hit our Render to Picture Viewer button, what we should find is that this camera in the middle of the world, in the middle of a sphere, in the same place as our light, will perfectly render out a sort of a atlas image of our light source. So if you place the IES light in a ball and you hit render, this is the texture of light which would get cast out into your scene. So what we've essentially made here is a, uh, a light map, a shadow map, a, uh, a gobo, they go by a lot of different names, but uh, this is now basically a texture for a light source. So what we can now finally do if I go back to my original scene here where I had my IES light and uh, a wall and a floor, I'll pop my IES light over to the side and I'll add in a new standard regular light source. Now this, if we sort of set it at the same distance and the same height, just so it has roughly the same parameters as this one, uh, basically you can texture light sources. A lot of people don't realise this. If you just make a standard material down here at the bottom, and simply enable the transparency setting. This is like putting a little projection cell image in front of a lamp, which you would normally project out with an overhead projector or a, a LCD video projector. We're literally making that little bit of film which sits in front of the light. So with our transparency, we can now load in our texture, which we didn't save out. That would be a good idea. Let's just grab our picture viewer here again. Okay, so here's our rendering. If we save this out, don't worry too much about the uh, the file format or the quality. IES data is not the highest quality data to begin with. And you can literally see various artifacts here in that light source. So don't worry about the image formats uh, compromising quality. IES files are already pretty compromised. Uh, but anyway, so I'm just going to leave all the defaults. We'll, we'll save out a TIFF. Nobody ever got in trouble for saving a TIFF. And we'll just stick this straight onto my desktop and I'll call it IES Light Map. Something that uh, lets you know what it is. Okay, so back in my scene, back in my material, I can now hopefully tell my transparency. Choose an image, we'll go for the IES Light Map. No, don't copy it. 
Okay, there we go. We've now essentially got an image with just a bit of a hole in it. But if we pop that texture onto our standard light source, and here's the key thing, to get it looking realistic, tell your light under details that it should be using some inverse square fall off. In other words, this is what real light does in real life. And essentially, there we go. Now, I will just let you know the downside. Your editor view will not look anywhere near as good as the IES real-time view does. Um, but as long as we shrink this down and get the strength of it right, when we hit render, this light will now be casting the exact same pan. Um, now, I've got to get the rotation right, so I'm not quite sure which way around this thing has to go. So you can make use of your interactive render region, maybe. Pop this over there. And I'm just going to rotate this thing around. Clearly, I've got to sort of spin it around 90 degrees this way. We're close, maybe 90 degrees to the side. There we go. Spot on. So my regular light, as long as we get it uh, not too large, we can shrink it down a bit. My regular light is now casting out the exact same illumination that my IES light was. So effectively, we've gone full circle and we're straight back right where we started. So what's the purpose of this? Well, editing. Because this is now a standard image, I can take this into Photoshop for my application of choice, and I could now add some extra streaks coming off this light. If I want to get, cast some extra streaks of light, I could say, hey, let's, uh, let's lose this backlight which is shining upwards into the sky. I could do that by deleting this bit over here to the side and this bit here to the side. This this smudge in the middle is your forward direction and these bits on the outside edge, so this is what happens behind the light source. So I, I now have the ability to edit my light or maybe even render out a few different um, images and combine them to make your own IES light. Uh, another advantage is you can now get real-time thumbnails in your operating system to see what these light maps look like. Normally the IES file is just this usually just this generic number and model number for a light bulb, which kind of means nothing to anybody. Um, other advantages is that this now makes it a bit more MoGraph friendly. One thing you may wish to do with your lights is scale them up and down to choose how bright they get. You can use the scale of a light to select the brightness. Well, you can't scale IES lights. Um, you can, however, though, scale a standard light. So this now suddenly makes this light with a gobo, with a uh, bit of IES data, far more MoGraph friendly. Uh, but anyway, there you go. There's how you can convert an IES file into an editable light map. Uh, you could now use these images perhaps in some sort of uh, real-time game engine, which doesn't support IES. Um, yeah, it just turns it into a more standard format, so you can now hopefully use it a bit more widely. Um, or, or even, here's an idea. Maybe just consider projecting this as a texture. If you're simply trying to get this nice pattern cast on the wall as if a light has lit it, maybe don't slow your project down using actual light sources. Consider that now this is a texture, you could simply apply that same image into the luminance channel. Let's turn this on. Into the luminance channel of a material. So, so long as you've got the projection right, uh, this is a bit I haven't practiced, by the way, so let's see if this works or not. Um, if I take this wall and I apply my baked light texture as a light source, I should, in theory, so I'll just pop one material on first and then I'll throw this on top. I should, in theory, be able to project this on spherically. And then as I move the texture around, it will effectively cast more or less the exact same light pattern. So I can now spin my texture projection around, change the direction, and I've now got a, a sort of textured version of what was previously my uh, my projected light. So yeah, it, it opens up some, some more possibilities for you. Anyway, uh, this is Mash from 3D Fluff, uh, signing off as ever. Feel free to visit 3dfluff.com to have a look at some of my uh, other longer form videos, or if you're after any training in the UK, again, do give me a call, and I'll be able to uh, hook you up with some Cinema 4D training. All right, until the next video, cheers for now.